Hello, here we are in the Cartier Manufacture in La chaux to finish our saga about Minute Repeater. Today we are going to speak about the sound in the Minute Repeater and we are going to ask Madame Carole Forestier, Head of Development at the Manufacture, about the mysteries of the sound in Minute Repeaters. So, let's go. Concerning sound, the most important thing to consider is that it's in reality a vibration arriving at our ears. The sound can be analyzed according to four criteria. First is its intensity, meaning the power it will arrive at our ears. Then the tone, which is the musical note played. It continues with the duration of the vibration, in other words, how long the sound lasts and how long it takes to subside. The fourth element is its timbre, where we study the vibration's frequency curve. And we also identify the sub-frequencies present. In the process of creating a minute repeater movement, we start by calculating the various components that will create the sound. This leads to the fabrication of partial prototypes constituting the sections of the movement. For instance, a hammer hitting a gong helps make the simulation match the real mechanism. We really need to go through this testing process in order to secure the simulation's mathematical model. Once it's done, we can refine the simulation and start conceiving the first watch. The intensity is the most well-known factor and the easiest to understand. This is the strength of the sound, and we measure it using the decibel scale. Avec une échelle, uh, appelle les décibels. Its particularity is that it's not linear. linear. When we double the number of decibels, we don't double the intensity, double the intensity of the perceived sound. Uh, la sensation perçue à l'oreille. Another factor is that if I accumulate two sounds of 15 decibels each, I won't hear 30 decibels. Our main focus is to always have a watch with high strength of sound easier to hear. Of course, we have to take into account the three other parameters that constitute the sound. The quality, the harmonics, and the fact that the sound is pleasant to the ear are as important as the intensity. To be sure that a striking watch has a strong intensity, we focus first on the components involved in the creation of the sound starting with the gongs as they vibrate the most. Their shape and hardness are closely studied. In terms of the case, if for instance we use metals with a high density such as gold or platinum, their ability to resonate is low. In contrast, if we take the same movement and put it into the same case made of titanium, which has a very low density, then it will transmit more vibrations. To sum up, the more I want to make an element vibrate, the less I will hear it, because it will be less easy to make it vibrate. The final objective is to make the whole watch resonate. And it is the vibrations of the watch that will arrive at our ears. The smaller the watch is, the less the vibrations will be audible. It is like a tum-tum. If I take a big one and a small one, I will hear less of the small one. This is the same for a watch. When we study the harmonics of a minute repeater, we notice that the vibration of a gong create a frequency Within we find subfrequencies. Musicians call these harmonics. And the more subfrequencies they are, the richer the sound and the more pleasant it will be to hear. On parle de richesse sonore. Et plus le son va être agréable à l'audition. Indeed, each person has his or her own feeling regarding what he or she is hearing in terms of quality, intensity, and richness of the sound. From one person to another, this criteria will be perceived in different ways. And this is also what constitutes the charm of striking watches.